Check, check. It's almost time to start the show. Give me a couple more minutes. I'm still getting high and waking up. It's uh, almost 9 o'clock here in Las Vegas, and we've got people from all over the world coming in. I mean, you got Simi Valley in California, New York, London, England. Oh, London, England? Ha <laughs> ha, I guess London, England's the same place. I should probably know that. Um, oh, it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And so if you've got kids and you're growing, eh, is it the best decision? Probably not. But who am I to talk? I did. I remember when my kid came and found my grow room when he was like five, six years old. Ah, he was a little helper ever since. All right, let me finish smoking, getting the show ready.
Switzerland, Ithaca. Wow, Israel, North Carolina, Maryland, Maine, Ithaca, Switzerland, Brazil. Damn. That is so many people. Boston. Do you remember Romper Room and my ma and the little magic mirror? And like the lady would hold up the little magic mirror and she'd say, Oh, in my magic mirror I see. <coughs> Yeah, I remember being six years old in my one-piece jammies with the little feeties. And I remember the day she said my name. Dude, I lost it. I was six years old. The lady on Romper Room saw me drinking coffee and hitting the bong with the grow boss. <laughs> oh, you know what, Semit? I will change the song for the intro, I promise. The only reason I don't have a more um, structured show with commercials and other stuff going on and like I don't have a more standardized show is because I got to tell you all week long <coughs> I am getting high I mean I'm doing all sorts of work I mean I, we're I'm making the videos we're fi I'm like I I'm really sort of on the last leg of all the parts and pieces of like the grow boss stuff so I will switch out the song I will change I will get a couple commercials I will format the show but literally by by the time I'm by the time I'm done with the week it is already Saturday and time for the next set show. So let me show you what I mean. Here's a little more of that music. <laughs> Southeast Missouri, Pittsburgh. And if you don't know what the song is, <coughs> sorry, the song is nothing. I just, some free YouTube download, whatever. Um, but the song plays in the background of this video. And if you look at this video, it is an eight week time lapse of the Bushmaster's garden. He put it out a little late. And if you've been following the series, I've got two more episodes coming for you. But he started his plants. And I won't tell you how late because that's part of the series. But... They didn't grow the way they were supposed to. You can't flower that late into the season. Now you might be able to get two harvests in, but when you grow outdoors, you can't. It's tough to harvest that late into the season. All right, anyway, I'm the grow boss. And this is a call-in show. It's Cannabis Hotline. It's Cannabis 101. It's Cannabis, 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 whatever you want it to be, Abyss. It's also Father's Day, so let me say Happy Father's Day. My kids are older. I've got two grandkids now, a boy and a girl. Super adorable. And you get to see the generation. You get to see the next generation continue on. So remember, you have to behave the way you want the next generation to treat you. I'm super pleased with my children. I mean, they're grown-ass men. Um, they were college-bound? No. Um, aggressive? Uh, like me, they like to accomplish tasks. Hell yes, it's spectacular. I uh, I love that. I mean, you can listen. You can go to college anytime. You don't got to push your kids into it. Listen, the school systems are a waste anyway. Let, let's just be frank. The school systems are a waste, right? I mean, there are people climbing the walls in Asia and India to fake tests so they can do better results. We don't. I mean, it's nothing like that here in the United States. Uh, you, United States, ah, we are super comfortable. Oh, we are so comfortable. We're fat. I'm fat. We're a fat nation. We're so comfortable. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, I just, you know, enjoy your kids. It's super, it's super awesome to have kids. They're super adorable. Gary Johnson, welcome to the show. Um, thanks, man, for your help, Bingus. Rock cha cha, Rochester. Thank you, Stank. 
Um, okay, the number is 84 Grow Boss. If you have questions about growing cannabis, call me up with your questions. Send me an email. I've got two hours on Sunday to talk because the store doesn't open till 11. And that's what separates me from all the other store, all the other cannabis shows. I am a hydro store. That's my dog, Ralph. Ralph! Ralph! Ah, he's passed the fuck out because he's a shop dog. There ain't nothing for him to do. This is my used equipment section. And in the show, I go over stories about the used equipment, where we get them, how I get them, what I'm paying for them. And I'll tell you, selling your used equipment in the middle of summer, it's like selling a boat in the rain. You're just never going to get what it's worth. And I don't care what you paid for it. And I don't care if you tell me, oh, it was only used once. Almost all used equipment is only used once. Why? Because 99% of growers fail. That's why I even have these Club 15. That's why I have these Club 15 t-shirts. And I go over to my book, Club 15 Growers. It really is a thing. See, I had my kids at 21 and 23, so they would get the fuck out of my house by the time I was 40. <laughs> Yeah, I loved it. They were growing up, they were super adorable, and then they were left the house, it was even better. Ah. No kids and I'm happy. See, I wouldn't have kids today. Hombre, too old. Three sons that you know of. Well, happy Father's Day for you-ish. <coughs> Can you explain the supplements on top of nutrients? I like that, supplements and nutrients. Okay. Supplements versus newts. Um, somebody asked about Project Grow House. Ah, oh, France. Good morning, France. Okay. So what I've been trying to do for the last three or four episodes in this series is I've been trying to impart apart to you all the information that swims through my dome when uh, you guys come to my store and you tell me shit. And so I'm trying to put into perspective the reality of growing cannabis uh, versus everything else on the internet and what it all tells you. Because I read every book out there, and so should you. You should read every book out there. There's the Bible. There's something by Ed Rosenthal. There's a book called Three Alight. There's a super nice book with colored pictures called Marijuana Garden Troubleshooting or something like that. And they're all brilliant. And I've read them all. And they, they, they all have nothing to do with growing. Three of Light's pretty good. Three of Light's pretty good. If you took all the videos that you've ever watched and you took sections from them with close-up, super nice, high-quality, high-res pictures, that is a spectacular book. Um, I, I've seen the book. Spectacular-looking book. Is it worth the money? Grow book's worth 20 bucks, answers all the questions you got, you guys have when you come in a hydro store. Uh, maybe if you get it on a deal, but I'll tell you, I have a problem. I've, I've seen it once and a customer brought it to my store and it was a silly customer, never going to get growing. Did all sorts of research, all sorts of research, came to my store, went to other stores. I really got to say of all the people in a decade, I haven't seen anybody do more research than this guy. I got an email from him last night. I, I literally, it's one of those things where I just stop reading at the second line because there's no point. Because it's always the same thing. You're not gonna tell me anything I don't know. So as soon as I read the first line, it says, I'm super disappointed. I really wished I would have bought a grow system. Okay, I'm out. Listen, it's a hydro store. Hydro store, hydro store. See all that shit out there? You know what we sell in the hydro store? Say it with me. Every hydro store sells hopes and dreams. Why? Because 99% of growers fail because you do too much, whether it's too much research, you think you know something, whatever it is. The system that I sold that guy was three four by four tents with two four foot eight bulbs in each. So you just sort of, it's a tight fit. So you just kind of either run them like this a little or you just set them like this it doesn't really matter it's four by fours you can put three in one room and except for the hottest months in vegas you can use you can generally get away with the house ac so when i sell you a system that i've sold hundreds 
of times before and and you're going to start an email with i wish i would have bought a complete grow system you bought a three light rotation my friend if you don't know how to grow with it it doesn't even matter what system you put underneath it hydro soil cocoa you could grow dwc i don't care what system you you you, you put it in the fact is if you don't know how to grow it really doesn't matter what system you buy so let's be clear what i sold you i sold you a system that's one side one step this side of gangster see you can produce up to about a pound a month in one bedroom of a house with three four by four three five by five tents you can produce a pound a month with t5 lights with a house ac and that means no no co2 however as soon as you step up to 600 watt hids and remember, 16, 4, 16, 8, 16 T5 bulbs, 4 foot T5 bulbs, is 864 watts. So you can do 864 watts of T5 or 600 watts of HID. The HID will still be hotter. They'll both produce about the same yield. So when you say you buy all of this stuff, you've done all of that research, and then you come in, oh, 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 I remember what happened. So this is the guy with the three alight book. And he comes in and he's gonna tell me something that he learned from this book. And I said, okay. So he goes through all of his stuff, he buys all of his equipment everywhere, and then he comes back and he tells me that he gets some nutrients with the book. So I said, great, you can do whatever nutrients you want, but just understand you have you have 800 watts in flour, so you're gonna be doing 80 watts a week, 80 ppm start to finish it's a 12 week process you're going to be doing if your final lights 800 watts if you use the P, the perfect ppm calculator it'll be about 80 ppm a week so i said brilliant start off with conex solution because it's baby food for plants it's 1.61 when you look at the npk rating on it that's baby food uh, no 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 he's got a whole nutrient schedule that he's going to use so I just want to suggest that when you hear me say things like don't grow a brain and I tell this to my customers all along I told it to this guy literally I'm going to tell you what to do and then your biggest battle is try to not grow a brain and that's not just this one particular customer this is this is everybody that comes through my store that thinks they know something why because this is cannabis and if you look at your plants more than once a week and in the average home garden like you know clearly in a facility with rotating schedules there's going to be people there all the time but if you're growing for yourself i just want to be clear you know the guy in high school that the girl you liked liked and he was sort of a dick and 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 the girl liked him and you couldn't understand why she would like him over you and the worse he treated girls the better they liked him it's probably a difficult example to use in the age of pc but you know that guy and you watched him all through high school because we went to i had one in my high school he hooked up with several girls i wanted to hook up with right that's how you have to treat your plants you literally have to be that guy you have to be the super dick guy who for some reason that was what the girls were attracted to See, the thing is, this is a plant, and 12 weeks to the plant is 15 minutes to you. And if you check on your plant once a day, twice a day, four times a day, and you're doing stuff every day, the probability of you killing your plant is 100%. That's why I tell you LEDs have a 100% failure rate, because the people who do the most research and think they know anything tend to buy LEDs. I mean, LEDs make fantastic promises with their heat and their better bud and their super yields and their... And listen, they put themselves out there like that. Like, I'm telling you, less is more. Like, come and make fun of me. Take any of the other books, any of the products I make fun of, and come and make fun of me. Call me on the show. The number's 84 Grow Boss. And come and tell me why I'm wrong. Think about it. We could put all the nutrient manufacturers and all the LED manufacturers and all the light manufacturers on a stage and literally say, all of you guys tell me you grow better butt. So let's do this. You guys decide amongst yourself which one of you truly grows the best butt. Have them step forward and explain why. Oh. Be a madhouse. They kill each other, right? So, 
my observation here is uh, it's all the same shit, right? So your job, because this is a 12-week process, and the plant just can't handle the attention that growers give it. I know you're excited. That's why I call the first 90 days stall and balling, right? <clears throat> because you have to wait until your tents are full of plants. That's a big deal. I mean, you have to wait till your veg is full of plants. You gotta start flower with plants. Halfway, I think, I think, uh, 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 open hotline. Okay, I got this, I got this. Open hotline. Okay. Um, okay, give me one sec. Control W tab ten. Okay, so I don't really have this stuff prepared. I just sort of show up in the morning and roll in and show you guys pictures. Okay, aha. All right, but I am getting better at it. So check this out. I, I really let's start here with uh, this picture. Now, one of the big things I always tell you about yield, one of the big things I always tell you about yield is, I don't, oh, and this is that thing, okay, so as part of the show, and if you've been following the show for a while, and, okay, so we're doing, okay, so we got a bunch of people, more than usual, if you follow the show for a while, you already know this, but if you haven't followed the show, let me tell you, I work at a hydro store for a long time now, and it's always the same problems. So what I'm trying to do as a concerted effort on the show is to give you all the thoughts that swim around in my dome when I look at a picture like this so you can evaluate things the way I do. Now, if you'd like to call in and talk about this picture or you have questions, you can always call me in at 84 Grow Boss. Otherwise, I'll just talk for two fucking hours. It's no problem for me. I've got pictures all day long. Why? Because most people fail. But this isn't failing though. So I'll give you a little bit of a lead right there. This isn't failing. Um, right, right away when I look at this picture, um, this was, I think somebody, this was from yesterday's show, emailed me these two. So, uh, let me see. Mike's on, you guys are all, um, what's my take on mammoth? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, in terms of bud, uh, everything, it's always the same bud, but in terms of mammoth, they must be doing some huge marketing push because they sent me some samples that I threw away like a year and a half ago because you can send the store samples but if you don't make arrangements with me and you don't send me anything that I can sell why am I giving away your shit like what the fuck do I care about mammoth you know what I mean like I'm in store business look at all these look at all these products in my store that I sell why would I put a product in my store that doesn't sell why would I help them they're not calling up the grow boss going hey grow boss We'd like to advertise in your book, or we'd like to give away your book, or we'd like to make videos about you. So why the fuck would I do anything for them? So I tell the hydro stores, listen, in Walmart, they pay to be on the shelves. You know what I'm saying? So I don't put you in my store. So Mammoth is another product. And I think if you grow great, the question I always ask, no matter what the product is, I don't care what product you think is the magic product. This is what I always ask you. If you got the most yield you could get from your light with whatever nutrients you want, in whatever plant shape, plant count, whatever you want, whatever system, when you get the most possible cannabis per gram, you know, grams per light, per watt, how much more do you think you're gonna get from Mammoth P? Because you know the bud's not gonna change. You've never looked at a bud and said, this wasn't grown without, with Mammoth P. There was, it's missing ears, whatever. So it always comes down to what do you think it's worth? For instance, two plants outside under the sun, they're both doing the same thing. They're both started at the same time, both getting fed from the same res, they're both 19 feet tall. If you had mammoth pea, what do you think you're gonna get? I, I really don't know. I mean, I don't ask to be disrespectful. My observation is merely, um, my observation is, is, is merely, what do you think it's worth? And if you don't have the whole plant as good as it can possibly be, do you think Mammoth P is going to fix your error? So once you have grower talent, 100% grower talent, everything grows the way it should be growing, you've done it three times in a row. Uh, maybe Mammoth P is worth something, but they must be doing some kind of advertising push because 
I mean, you're probably person five I've heard in the last three months. So Mammoth is doing something well. I mean, they're doing something right because people are coming in asking about it. I'll tell you the rule at the hydro store. The first person that asks about something, oh, no, that's, I, if I don't have it, oh, no, that's, you don't want that shit, and I'll sell them something else. The second time somebody asks me about it, I'll still talk shit about it and sell them something else. But the third time, I have to order it, right? And it was the same thing with Turpinator. I now have two bottles of Turpinator on the shelf of my store. I mean, I, I buy them from eBay because, you know, it's, it's, I think it's like a buck cheaper than my distributor. But <clears throat> I buy it from eBay and I add three bucks to it. And then I just talk shit about it because like if I sell one, I got to order another one, right? But people come in and they ask for it. So that's what I tell the vendors and the distributors that create these products. If you want me to sell your shit, send the customers to my store. Like, like, uh, 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 hydro stores don't seem to like selling my book. Like, I can tell you guys, it's just between us, there's 160 of us. My book never resonated with hydro stores. I sell... 20 plus books on average a day several days a week we sell 30 books uh, packages packages not just books ro kits mega meters you know i have all these different books the 420 guide we've got these shirts so i sell anywhere from 20 to 30 packages a day in those packages we include fun free gift cards that literally almost a thousand growers a month we have a 33% rebuy rate at, in, in my business, in my personal business. It's not 33% of customers, but if you add up all the rebuys and, add, and if you add up all the customers and divide by all the rebuys, we have one out of three people rebuy. Quite frequently what happens is you buy the book, you come back, you buy the No More Grow More cards, you get the Mega Meter and you end up with the RO. Why? Because I walk you all through how to get there in the Grow Book and all the other products that I sell, right? Because I don't teach you, I mean, I don't sell you a nutrient. I don't really have like these products that I, I, I sell you guys. Like, I, I'm not really doing battle with the other nutrient companies. Like, I don't, I don't get into all of that because, frankly, anybody can start a nutrient company. Uh, there's more nutrients than anything else out there, it seems. So, that's, uh, Let's see. So that's my take on Mammoth P. Like, if it changed the world, it would be in the news. Like, every farmer would be switching to it, right? Like, they would dust spray it on crops. Um, there would be protests against whatever Mammoth P is. And, yeah, you know, like, no hard feelings. Let's, uh, uh, maybe it's 2M's Mammoth P. Mammoth P nutrients. I think there's a couple of, I think there's a mammoth. Yeah, here we go. Here's a, here's mammoth P. It comes in different sizes. Nutrient liberator. Oh, microbes in this one. So mammoth P microbes. Microbes. So mammoth P seems to be microbes. So if you're asking me, what do I think mammoth, mammoth P compared to like, compared to like Clonex? microbes oh man clonex root maximizer microbes listen look look at all those look at all those microbes in there you know what i'm going to read you the list of microbes glomus intra dices glomus destercola glomus Edenucatum, Glomus clarium, Glomus clarodium, Glomus mosi, Gigspora. Oh, dude, I remember when Gigspora fought Godzilla. Remember that shit? Ah, oh. Gigspora albida, Trichoderm harzium, Bacillus brevis, Bacillus subtilis. They got, listen, they got microbes from every country. There's like microbes from every country in the world in here. All I'm suggesting is there comes this point where I don't really know what the difference between microbes is. I really don't. I mean, there's only so many microbes. I mean, you're not going to put strep throat in a bottle and you're not going to inoculate your plants with polio. All I'm saying is microbes 
serve a legitimate function. And when we talk about microbes, and I've spoke about this before, when we talk about microbes, they serve a super legitimate function. I always tell you, light, water, CO2, microbes. Because, oh, oh, you know what? I'll tell you something. The uh, I'll show you something. You guys, these guys, nobody spent more money like... In the history of advertising in the industry, nobody spent more money in a shorter time than raw nutrients. And these things are, they're great. I mean, they're made of the same minerals as everything else. So I'm just saying that they're, you get 10 times the amount. Um, think, about, think about these bottles of nutrients. If you just kept pouring salt into a bottle of water, eventually you would squeeze all the water out. And you would squeeze all the water out. And what would be left? Nothing but salt inside the container. So that's how you that's why salt nutrients but that's also what makes them so dangerous <clears throat> but these guys these guys had a product that they were uh these guys had a micro these guys have a micro product and they were telling me a story at one of the trade shows one of their sales reps where they started selling their micro blend to the local farmers and the reports from the local farmers were they were using considerably less nutrients on the order of 15 percent but using the microbes and they saw a relationship in growth size as well. And I, I, I took that, I took that to be, you know, it was a really meaningful story from a company that actually makes the products and supplies their neighbors with the products. So that's something I really sort of, I really sort of grabbed onto. And I thought microbes are always pretty good. I've always had like, Oh, Oh, and then when you read that story where I told you that one of my employees took a scoop of uh, took a scoop of microbes and put it in the turbo clone in the window in that clear turbo clone we had in the window, you've never seen a root ball like that. You've never seen a root ball like that until you look at the Bushmaster with uh, until you look at the Bushmaster and the turbo clone video. I'll have that up in about a week. I'm working on it. But as soon as you add microbes like these Clonex microbes, microbes are fantastic. And here's the picture that I show you in the book. Microbes literally live on the roots. They tend, T-E-N-D. They tend the roots like they're the gardens of their lives. Why? Because by cultivating the roots on a plant, the microbes make not only make the roots bigger, but they extract sugar from the roots and they clean the roots and the, phys the roots physically grow larger, allowing even more space for microbes to colonize. So when I tell you more root, more fruit, I mean, that's straight up lung power. The more lung you have, the more power you have in terms of oxygen efficiency, in terms of using it and converting it into muscle uh, and converting it into energy and, and, and doing stuff. That's why I show you this little tiny plant, big giant roots. Because that is the reality of using microbes, little tiny plant, big giant roots I, I, I'm just trying to put in perspective I'm being you know obviously I'm being funny here but that's the reality of the situation like you know I, I remember going to green thumb with like my parents to buy an orange tree and I remember my dad literally like lifting the plant kicking the bucket it would fall off and he'd look at the roots you know as a six-year-old I'm just I'm just riding those little those little those little carts that they had the little red wagons that they had crashing it into their plants but he was right to do that. Why? Because it's all about the roots. And that's why microbes are so spectacular. Now, there are things that fix root problems. Yes. Let's talk about enzymes and like the product that you see in hydro stores, Hydrozyme. That's one of them. You've seen this in all the hydro stores. Um, we've seen Hydrozyme. They do a lot of advertising. So you've probably seen this stuff in stores. Hydrozyme. Think of this like uh, think of this like three percent peroxide. Like when you put like you get a wound, you put peroxide on it, you watch it bubble. What's bubbling? Those are the damaged cells. The damaged cells in your skin. The peroxide, the, the O3, the one oxygen breaks off. It interacts with the perox. It interacts with your cell that's damaged, and it lyses the cell when it con when the enzymes come in contact with living with the organic matter inside the cell. You, that's the foam that you see. So essentially, you're you're killing everything, the damaged cells, including any bacteria that would be that that technically would be on that part of your that part of the wound. Okay. 
So this is hygrozyme. Now hygrozyme will help with root rot. It'll eat the rot off the plant. What it won't do is encourage root growth like microbes does. So uh, you can add hydrogen peroxide You can add this hydrogen peroxide. Remember, this hydrogen peroxide shit is uh, 352. Hang on one sec. This hydrogen peroxide oh. shit, this 35% restaurant grade hydrogen peroxide that we sell in the stores, never store that above your face. This shit will burn your eyes out, man. When you do hydrogen peroxide, make sure you wear glasses because if you get a spot in your eye, dude, it'll leave a little dot for the rest of your life, like floating around, like you'll everywhere. So you gotta be careful with hydrogen peroxide, pH up, pH down. Always store those things below your face and whenever you use them, below eye level, and whenever you use them, always make sure you wear safety goggles. All right, I also wanted to get back to this picture too, but that's why you should use microbes. Clonex Root Maximizer. Okay, so let's get back to this picture. And 352, what can I do for you? Grubbles, good morning, great show, bro. Thank you, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you, bro. Happy Father's Day. Um, I don't have any of my own, but I hear you have two, huh? Yeah, two boys. Ah, two boys. So two, easy. Two what boys. Amazing, you? bro. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. So, um, Grubbles, you know, now that you're talking about uh, magic, magic products, right? So, um, I have a question. So, I have a, a six shitty plant that I need to get into flower, right? And it's been vegging for 12 weeks when it's finally knee high. So I'm about to flip her, right? But I have a question. See, my friend who has a few grows under his belt tells me to get the most yield out of a six shitty plant is to connect a car battery to a plant with jumping cables. You know, the, the cables you use to jumpstart a car with the black terminal connected to the stalk of the plant and the red terminal connected to the rim of the container. And that's how I'm supposed to get the best deal out of a six shitty plant. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Oh, man. I get it. I get it. It's a six Chevy plant. Yes. That's very funny. Yeah. Yeah. And the accent works too. The Chevy accent works too. <laughs> That's very funny. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Robos, actually, I'm glad that you're talking about the hydro sign, you know, because I was watching that video where you were talking about them. And again, there was no audio there. So can you please talk about about, about the hydrozyme and, and you know and if, if I need to use it in hydro again, okay? And I'll, I'll take my answer offline and listen. Happy Father's Day, bro, and thanks for a call. <laughs> thanks so much. Shit, am I am I losing this mic again? Okay, oh, so listen, a lot of people seem to have some good things to say. All right, I'll get your. Uh, all right, Chevy, I will get your uh, hydrozyme to hydrozyme in a sec. Um, but we're going to talk more about your 12 week knee high veg plant. So I just want to point out that great white, I am here. Great white is good. This new rooting product, this new, uh, micro product from Clonex is good. Yeah. They're all good products. My question is, is it better than the next? Because microbes are totally worth it, but are different microbes totally worth it? Ah. Oh. Or I, 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 yeah. Oh, here's can of microbes. Um, you use microbes start to finish every two weeks because they do not reproduce in colony supporting levels and they live for about two weeks. Now I'll tell you the, the next benefit about microbes because I was telling you something about this. Um, so I was telling you something about the, the, the root thing, right? The other benefit about microbes is microbes pre-process the nutrients for the plant. So where the plant would take one and a half sugars to process the nutrient, breaking it into something the plant can recognize and combining it into something the plant can use. For one unit of sugar, the microbe will do it and hand that pre-processed nutrient off to the root. Peroxide and, and hygrozyme doesn't do that. So when the microbe dies, the microbe, it turns out, is made of stuff that the plant can eat too. So not only do the microbes do the dirty work for the plant, saving it 30%, 33% of the amount of sugar the plant would take to do it. So from one and a half units down to one unit, 
They also are nutrients themselves when they die. They also encourage root growth. So there are so many reasons to use microbes. Now, hygrozyme and peroxide, great, they both clean the roots. But in terms of enzymes, okay, so there's, there's, there's different types of enzymes, right? There are things that are catalysts. Catalysts trigger reactions. For instance, sugar is a catalyst for the release of insulin, which gets absorbed by the cells through the little, you know, you've seen the cellular membranes and they have the receptors that get locked in. Sugar is the catalyst for the release of insulin. If you don't release sugar, you don't release insulin. If you don't have any insulin, the sugar part's irrelevant, but that's what diabetes is about. Um, just depends on which side, right? If they don't, if you don't release insulin, that's one type of diabetes. If you release insulin, but the cells don't recognize it, that's the other type of diabetes. But that's what we're talking about here is a catalyst. Now, when plants are growing very fast, there are things that they can't produce enough of. Okay. If they can't produce enough of something, that brings us to this discussion where the caller asked earlier today to talk about supplements versus nutrients. If your plant doesn't have enough of something, whether it's CO2 or, or MAG, <laughs> there really isn't anything else because there's always too much light, too much water, and too many nutrients. So there really isn't anything else. So when we talk about supplements, supplements solve problems. They are not nutrients. Supplements generally have a number on the bottle of 111 or less where nutrients where nutrients like this 216 that's nine and that's just one of three parts by the time you add bloom and micro to this you're at like an npk rating of 27. this is an npk rating of 2.6 this is baby food for plants clonex solution this is See, how do you, I'll tell you, how do you know when to trans, how do you know when to stop using baby food and start using uh, uh, veg food? I'll tell you, when you use so much of this shit, you're like, dude, I'm using like four ounces of this. I should be using one ounce of this. Okay, you switch from veg nutrients, I mean, from baby food to veg nutrients, when you use so much of this, it starts to get expensive. When you're using 30 mils of this instead of five mils of this, that's when you switch. You're like, oh shit, I probably should have switched a week ago. But you don't switch nutrients based on the light. You don't switch nutrients based on a schedule, 18, 6, 12, 12. You don't switch nutrients just because you go into flower. I mean, you went into flower today. You switched the lights. The plants got two fucking weeks before they even know. You know what I'm saying? Like 15 minutes to you is 12 weeks to them. So there's this relationship between you do something like you don't when you go into flower you don't increase the light you especially don't increase the light if you thinned up your plants like in this picture here like in this picture here that was very dramatic okay give me one sec um like in this picture here you don't uh you don't switch to flower nutrients, especially, especially if you're going to strip the bottoms. How can you put less, la less plant into flower, less canopy into flower, and spread them out so it's thinner, strip the plants, and then increase the light? How can you put a smaller plant under a bigger light when I just got through telling you? Too much light's the number one problem. That's why I'm so, that's why I don't care what light you use. I don't care what meter you buy. I don't care what nutrients you use. I don't care what microbes you buy. Always buy Clonex, Microbes, Root, Ma Root Maximizer though. As long as you have the choice. They're also way less expensive. That's the thing, like, they're super less expensive. The four ounce by some of these guys are 40 bucks. Clonex four ounce, 30 we were debating we should price them at 35 it's a new product we should price them at 35 in the store why oh because i sell hopes and dreams <laughs> but we were going to price them 35 at the store because 
35 is cheaper than the 40 for the competing product. I literally just look at the growers and go, here's the competing product for 40. Here's the same bottle from another vendor. They all get it from the same place. Here's another one for 35 bucks. People's response to $30 four ounce microbes from Clonex Root Maximizer. It's been, oh shit, that's so much cheaper. <laughs> so anyway, they all get their microbes from the same place. Um, okay. So we were talking about, when you look at this chart, what I always want to show you is the rule is called snap. Snap. See this right here? Snap. Supplements, nutrients, additives, then you pH. And the reason that I always tell you that nutrients are snap and that you should be adding supplements, nutrients, additives, and pH. And there's a reason for that. Why? You add supplements first because supplements solve problems. Now remember, supplements are things with one, one, one or less. They usually solve problems. Now yes, nitrogen supplements can sometimes be like a 1601. Okay, that's really high. And those PKs sometimes, they do like a, like a 01010. But you're really not using a PK 01010 to solve a problem. You're using it to increase PK. It's, it's more like a nutrient, like you're modifying the nutrients on your own, uh, you know, for your own schedule. What I caution you guys on is doing something like you could have one, like a liquid PK boost, right? Like you got, you got any of the Humboldt products with a liquid PK boost, like a, they're deuce deuce. If you add that to a nutrient, you add a lot more, a lot more NPK, you got a lot more K. So you're adjusting the base nutrient. So if you have a grow nutrient, let's say it's a 644, and you want to turn it into a flower nutrient, all you have to do is add like a 01010 to it. Why? Because a 644, okay, let me, let me get something. Let me get something. Yeah, you guys are gonna love this. You probably heard it before, but you're gonna love this. Whatever. I can always get up and go into my walk into my store and go get more stuff if I need it. Okay, this. Oh, I know what I wanted. Glam. That's why this is the best show of all the shows, because I can just walk my dumb ass into my hydro store and go get you stuff and teach you stuff from all the shit that you see when you go to your hydro store. Okay, this is a 01010. You all know what this is. There is nothing else in this but PK. Okay, 01010, PK. This is... You know this, Moab, mother of all blooms, it's a 52-30, right? It's a 50-30. Blossom Blaster, 40-25. Oh, yeah. Another, what's this one? Uh, it's a 5-45-19. It's a 33-20. It's...
Hello, Grobos. Your microphone's not working. Check, check, check. Ah. Okay. So the text started flying in. Okay, so god damn. Okay, I went to I went to Circuit City last night. I tried to buy a new one of these. They were out. Somebody said yesterday that the mics were clicking on it. So Okay. All right, hopefully I got that fixed. That's pretty fucking good. Listen, I remember 8 weeks ago, 7 weeks ago when uh when uh it was like the common problem. <laughs> I'm doing so much better now. Yeah, problem shit got solved right away. Okay. Um, where'd I lose you? Caller. Oh, okay. Caller is gone. Okay. Thanks to the caller. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. There's our hero called in. Hey, Lord Champa, what about me? I got, I'm, I'm better at it. You're back. Okay. No sound. Okay. 385. 385. Did you have a call or a question you wanted to ask me or something? Just letting you know your microphone's not working, man. Right. Check, check. No, it's, it's I think it's working. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, where'd you lose your, me? Uh, where'd you lose me? Okay, I think I got it now. It says, it says my mic's working again. Okay, so did you, okay, yep. did you lose, and, uh, oh, did you hear any of the shit that I was going through with the nutrients? No. Okay, I'll start over. Fuck! Missed all the explanation. Okay. Alright, listen, I'm going to smoke this bud, and then we're going to start over. No, 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 Christopher Hawker, no, no. I got it. I got it, I got it. Five minutes! Fuck! Lost us when he sat down. Damn it! so much work okay i'll buy another mic listen i'm not going to wear a set of headphones for two hours on sunday so we're going to have to work this out i'm just not wearing a set of headphones okay You know, I think it's actually the, I think it's actually the back of uh, this thing right here. I sock, I beat this thing a couple of shows back. So, um, hit the bong, not the mute button. Right. Okay. So. This is what you need to know about these nutrients. Okay. Powdered nutrients. This is a this is a two it's a 24528. This is Blossom Blaster. It's a 4025. This is one of the three parts from Open Sesame. It's a 54519. No, I can't do a wireless mic and wear it on my shirt because that happened last time. Oh, I just missed the call. Call me back. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't do that because it didn't. It, it wasn't loud enough. So this is Moab. It's a fifty-two thirty-two. This is Big Up Powder. It's a thirty-three twenty-three. They're all PK boosts. What I'm suggesting when you look at this chart here is that you don't need two different PK boosts. An office boss. I don't want to be an office boss. Okay. So you don't want to use two different PK boosts. I mean, that's two of these things are silly. Okay. This is... This is liquid... This is liquid cool bloom. It's a 0, 10, 10 at the bottom, right? Floor and nectar. It's a 0, 0, 1. And we got pure blend... Pro, Bloom, and Grow, and CalMag. All I'm suggesting is that once you know what's in there, it's sort of the same shit. And I go through this and all about nutrients. I go through it specifically like I break down the numbers for you, and I do the math because I show you this is 
PK, but it also has mag sulfur in it. This is mag sulfur. This is PK. If you were to add these two together, liquid cool bloom and fluorine nectar, you would end up with PK mag sulfur. Now, if you used five times the amount of a 0 10 10, you would get a 0 50 50. So if a 0 50 50 is pretty friggin' close to a 45 28, see what I'm saying? 50 50, 45 25, well, 0 50, 0 50 30, 0 39 25, 0 33. All I'm suggesting is that you don't want to use two versions of the same shit. Now, when you use something like this, you're adding this to make the buds bigger. You're changing the PK formula for the nutrient where this is a 10-10, it's not a supplement. You're adding it to change the nutrient. So you would take a grow nutrient like this and you would turn it into, let's say you used, let's say you used half the amount. So it was a 0.55. You would turn this into, instead of a 324, it'd be a 379. Listen, the only, thing that, the only thing that really changes nutrients between grow and flower is the ratio from N and P and K. 325, what can I do for you? Grow, Bob. Uh, I used that cool bloom and I almost nuked my plant. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Say that again, say that again. I used the cool bloom formula and I almost nuked my plant by using it on top of my regular business. Okay, super and bad. I had a <laughs> okay, listen, that was a super bad connection. I'm sorry. Try to call me back. But he said he used that cool bloom powder and he nuked his plants. And he's right, because powdered nutrients are just a thousand times stronger than grow nutrient than uh, liquid nutrients. There's a lot of energy in powdered nutrients. Okay, so really the only difference between grow and flower nutrients, geez, I, I know it's in here. The only difference between grow and flower nutrients, I still haven't even put uh, little tags on my book so I could find stuff in here. You know the grow diamond? Yeah. I'm sure it's in here. Here we go. Okay. What's the difference between grow nutrients and flower nutrients? The N. That's it. That's the difference between grow and flower nutrients. 410, you're on with the grow boss. Hey, uh, happy, uh, happy Father's Day, grow boss. Thank you so much. Good morning. What can I do for you? I got a couple questions for you. Just two quick questions. What is your take on uh, genetic drift? Uh, I've read a lot about that online, as in it takes a clone, a clone, a clone over time. Those successful clones are even uh, bigger and potency. Um, is that a thing? Have you seen that? Uh, in regards to whether or not I should keep your mother. And also, is there any hype in your opinion associated with? Um, the strains of cannabis that win the cannabis cups, um, and then the strains that are produced by the country of other seed banks um, that, that haven't necessarily won cups, um, but are, are, are reputable and, and known as, as, as good strains um, on the market. That, that are being sold you know, through the, through the, the uh, online seed banks. I just wanted to get your take Okay, listen, we got a bad connection. I'll answer those questions. One question is genetic drift. And this is one of those things, I, I don't even think it exists. Think about what we're talking about. You have to have a clone so long that you've taken clones from clones from clones from clones from clones. So you don't have a mother plant. Because if you had a mother plant, you would take clones from the same plant over and over. See, taking a clone from a clone what we're talking about, is it like making a photocopy of a photocopy or is it like copying a digital file? Because if you think taking a clone from a clone is like a photocopy of a photocopy where it keeps getting worse, that's one theory. The other theory is, 
it's a digital copy where every time I copy it, it's the same file. It checks to make sure it's the same file. My observation is this, who the fuck has a plant long enough, a strain long enough? Who the fuck grows? I mean, even if you had a three light rotation and you were doing a harvest a month, it's still only, you would take clones from the ones in veg, it's still only six clones a year from clones. Genetic drift? I mean, think six generations, think five generations back and one generation forward. There hasn't been that much change in humanity. And that's 100 years, 15 years a generation. So do I think genetic drift exists? 99% of people fail. There's my, there's my used pile of equipment shit. 99% of growers that start fail. That's my pile of used equipment shit. So do I think genetic drift exists? Ah, oh, yeah, I'm sure. At some point, but not at any point that matters to 99.8% of growers. So I'm just suggesting that if it happens, let's just say genetic drift exists. And I tend to look at it as one of those things where genetic drift, pH lockout, nutrient lockout, um, your genetics, you need new genetics. All of these things are excuses to justify people killing their plants until I started categorizing it. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking to take credit for anything, but I do sell the grow book and equipment guide. Right, so you should buy that if you want to see this information. Grow book and equipment guide. eBay, Amazon, not your local hydro store, and from my website, thegrowboss.com. Um, I'm just suggesting that it, it plays so little a role that I don't care. In terms of winning Cannabis Cup, it, I think it's brilliant for marketing. A lot of people go to the Cannabis Cup. In terms of a strain, yeah, I suppose it's buyer beware. I mean, you smoke, if you're a smoker every day, do you find there to be like, like an enormous difference between the high? I mean, sometimes you might smoke a bud and be like, that tastes awful. But it gets you the same high, right? I mean, like, fuck, I touched my eye after that bud. Oh, God, that bud has so many crystals in it. And then you touch your eye, you stick the crystals in your eye. And then, anyway, okay. So in terms of the difference in bud, um, this is what I always show you guys. Let's see. Um, we're good. We'll do. This is what I always show you guys. When you go to a dispensary, and listen, marketing is really smart. Marketing not only takes into account the information that uh, about their product, they also have to take about take into account the information that people want to see. So, here is, I wanna show you, okay. So here's a cannabis label. It says, cannabisutical. Oh, I got, it sounds like testicle. Cannabisutical facts. Tested on January 1st, 2011, your logo here, Blue Dream, Sativa Hybrid. THC max 13.6, THCA 14.9, THC 0.53, CBD max 7.6, 8.12, CBDA, CBD 0.48, CBN 0.25. Safety screen, total aerobic, enterobic, yeast and mold, pesticides. Hey, okay. Nowhere on there does it say grown with an LED. Now that's just the laboratory. Okay, here's a dispenser. Here's like the, the pack that you might see more commercial where you buy it. Okay, so they've taken the report and they've highlighted 20, now it's, it's not the same report, but they've highlighted 21.5%, CBD less than 0 0.01, CBG, CB Gangster, CBN 0 0.01. All I'm suggesting is that moisture content 6.52, um, total cannabinoid, total tested by confidence, analytics uh, here it says something about indica batch number harvested when tested when produced by okay so og's pearl now this puts a brand name of a company so this is somebody nine point growth industries so if you like the way these people grow you're probably going to like their buds now their buds may have many different strains this one's a pearl another one might be a, a sativa a haze 
both grown, both strains grown by the same people. So you know that these people that are growing it have a history and a reputation to protect. Okay, that's fucking brilliant. They put somebody's name on it, so if you don't like it, you're going to talk shit about them. That's perfect. Product of wherever it is, indoor grown using soil techniques. I've never even seen soil techniques. I've never even seen anybody put soil on one of these things. Maybe they'll put LED under it one day. Now that I've started doing it on my show, you can be like grown in hydro. But I can't imagine that nine point growth industries wants you to know what they grow it in. They don't want to distract you like that. You just want to know nine points industry. Maybe they put a card on the inside with like a cabbage patch picture. Your bud was harvested from this plant. That'd be cute. But all they're trying to do is brand it, is personalize it, which is smart. But when I talk about labels and marketing, and when I talk about all the marketing, all the vendors do about all the nutrients and all the lights and all the shit, let's be clear. Nine Point doesn't care if you know what nutrients they use. Why? Because they want you to buy their product, whether that be OG's Pearl or whatever other brand you're buying. They want you to buy their brand. They want you to recognize their brand. And when we talk about shows like the Marijuana BizCon that I'm going to here in Las Vegas at the end of the year, that's a big deal because this is the early stages of the marijuana industry right now. This is where when you go to the show, these are where the new players who 10 years from now are going to be the old dogs. They're going to be the good old boys. So the industry is burgeoning, is blossoming now. These guys are branding there. I would have it OG's Pearl by Nine Point. Too many words in their name, right? OG's Pearl by Nine Point. Nine Point's OG's Pearl. OG Pearl by Nine Point. I like that better. But I would focus on their brand because, frankly, anybody can grow OG's Pearl. There are lots of brands like Nine Point. And then when it all becomes legal and the big corporations come in and they can live off 11% profit, companies that this that are doing like 30% right now will sell to the big companies just like they did to the breweries. Why? Because it's all the same shit. All the buds, the same shit. Is there a difference in highs between various buds? Yeah, hell yeah. Some of them knock you out, some of them wake you up. <clears throat> it's been difficult because it's been illegal to find a consistent strain. So if you find a strain like nine points, something like this, I say lock onto it. You know, ask if they're going to keep it on hand. You get these little super stay fresh bags. You know, you might be considered buying a little extra if you know you like it. The problem was, like in the old days, all of all of us would get in cars, like the one guy who sold the bud would pull up front of like a row of bunch of cars down a dead end street. Like a, like a you know, not dead end because you got to get out, but like a street where there's no houses on the backside, like unincorporated. And then one at a time, the cars would get, you know, one person would get out and go and then that everybody would drive away. That was one way anyway. <laughs> I used to have a little YZ50 and I used to sell in like Vaughn's parking lots. And so I'd roll up my little YZ50 with my little helmet on and I'd slang weed into cars. So I was meeting somebody at a Vaughn's and like I pulled up on the car that I thought was theirs. And there's like four yoke tattoo dudes in the car. And I'm like, this isn't, you know, this is not my friend. And they rolled down their window and they're like, like, yo, did Johnny send you? And I was like, and I flip up my visor and I'm like, I pull down the helmet. I'm like, yo, I think I got the wrong deal. Sorry, bro. I put my visor down. I'm like, why is he 50 and rode away? <clears throat> See, you didn't know if you were going to get the same bud twice in a row back then. So it was tough. But now that you know you can get the same strain over and over, we'll really start to see the individual details come into play. <clears throat> okay. So that's what I think about strains. We were talking about nutrients. Okay, so I want to get back to this picture here too. I'm going to have to take a break in a minute, but let me finish this up about nutrients because what I want to suggest is, is that you can take a PK and you can add it to like an N. I don't have one in front of me, but you can, you can take like an N. And if you had a 10N, like a 10 0, 0, you could add it to this and you'd have a 10, 10, 10. If you use it at half strength, you'd have a 555. Five, five. You can combine any of these things to make just about anything else at a new level. For instance, this is a 235. 
that's a flower nutrient, right? Because two, three, five, two, three, five has less N. So if this is a awesome, there it is. So if this was a two, three, five, you can see that N is the lowest. Boom, flower nutrient. Botanicare though has CalMag, number one selling bottle in my store. It is a 200. If you add a 200 to a 235, you get a 435. And suddenly, it's a grow nutrient. Now, when you come into my store, I always tell you, you need one grow, one flower, one CalMag, one grow, one flower, one CalMag, and one sweet product, one mag sulfur. Those are the four nutrients and buy yourself a microbe, which is not nutrients. But the question again was about what is a supplement? So your job is to use the grow nutrient until your plant, don't kill your plant with too much light or too much water. Use the grow nutrient until your plant shows a little bit of purpling. That means you don't have enough mag. Okay, then you would add CalMag. If you use RO water, you're always going to have to use CalMag, but if you're not using RO water, it doesn't matter. All I'm saying is that you could continue to use CalMag, and if you add it to your flower nutrients, suddenly you have a grow nutrient that you've made out of it. Now, this is mag sulfur. And right, I just want to point out that right across, that right across from the nutrient page is the, this. This is the CalMag mag sulfur. This is CalMag mag sulfur. CalMag mag sulfur. You are using mag the whole way through. See how mag's purple? You're using mag the whole way through, start to finish, veg and flower. However, halfway through flower, when your buds are full size and they're just starting to crystallize, you're going to switch from cow mag to cow sulfur, to mag sulfur. Why? Because sulfur is part of the ripening process. That's like a peach that's hard like an apple. You can't eat it. A horse can eat it. A cow can eat it. People can't eat it because it's starch, not sugar. It's like a potato. You got to cook it. So it stays on the tree until it becomes soft and sugar. So it goes starch, sugar, and then the peach falls and it becomes sugar alcohol. So the starch, sugar, alcohol pathway is facilitated by sulfur. So you don't need sulfur anytime before the plant starts to ripen. That's the relationship between CalMag and Cal Sulfur, CalMag and Mag Sulfur. Then you add these PK products to it. Then you add PK products to that. All I'm suggesting is that you wouldn't add two of these two PK boosters, and you wouldn't add, even if one's a liquid and one's a powder, because they're both the same shit. They're both PKs. Oh man, that's my coffee. That's why I show you right here, specifically like right there. Don't do two PKs. It's the same shit. All right, give me, let's see. Check this out. Gotta love. Um, I forget if you type Bushmaster and it's all weapons. Okay, this is one of the Bushmaster episodes series. 99 Plants with me, the Grow Boss. And since this is the first video in the series, I thought I would give you an introduction to the operation and show you around before we really started getting into it. So, in each video, I'll go over what we did since the last video, and what we have planned until the next one. And in each episode, I will show you all the products and skills we're using to do this. And the best part is, we are going to do time-lapse photography and close-up photography too, so we can really get into it. Then, as we go, we will record all that information in my 20-week garden. I just love that Bushmaster video. Look at that shit. So much work. That's Nutramix. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that was a good video. Okay.
So that's powders. That's the difference between the powders and the liquids. But just, I just want you to understand that all of these things, specifically all of these things come from All these things come from, they're all made from the periodic table of elements. They all combine the same minerals. It, it isn't like one of these nutrients that I sell in my store, I'm crushed a meteorite and it's the only one with space iron. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I got nutrients in my coffee. It was almost done. Okay, I do want to get back into hydroponics. Oh, okay. It's uh I'm with a couple of customers right now. Can you uh can you call we open we open at 11 today. Can you stop in after that? No problem. No problem. Uh-huh. My name is Jason. Come in. I'll give you a copy of my book. Bye-bye. All right. You're on with the Grow Boss, 812. Hello? Hi, you're on with the Grow Boss. Hey, how's it going? Good morning. What's going on today? Uh, uh, I talked to you last week. Okay. I was having that issue. Uh, and yeah, we, we talked. Uh, I just had a quick question with the T5. Okay. If, if I take some, if I take some seedlings and uh, they're four or five inches, would could I go ahead and, and use that just to sex them, just to tell me you know what they are? No. How do you think? What do you? How are you going to sex a seedling? Well, just to put it on 12 and 12, because I don't, I, they're not feminized to, to see, you know, if it's a male or a female. Okay, but after you figure out if it's a male or a female, and you throw away the males, what are you going to do next? I was just going to put it back on 24. Okay, so you veg with 18.6. You start seeds yes. with 24. So... Right. I, 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 I honestly don't know. I've never heard of that before. Could you? Okay. Should I? I don't know. I don't know if you even could. Okay. I'll tell you what most I, I people didn't know. do. I don't know. You know what? I'll tell you what most people do. What most people do is they grow the plant, then they take clones from that plant, then when the clones root, they flower the plants the clones came from, then, if the plants are female, they keep the clones, and if the plants are male, they throw the plants and those clones away. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, think you can sense. sex them as a seedling, and I definitely don't think it's a good idea to flower them and bring them back as a seedling. I don't even think it's a good idea to veg them and flower them and do like that. Okay, that's why I was going. <laughs> yeah, listen, it's, I know people like to start from seeds, but just understand, when you start from seeds, it adds 30 days if they're feminized and you know they're female. If you start from unsexed seeds, non-autoflower, non-autoflower, unsexed seeds, it adds almost 90 days. Like I talk about stalling balling, and if you have plants, you've got to veg for 90 days just to fill up your grow and flower space. But if you have to start from seeds, it's 90 days twice because you've got to start the seed 30 days. You've got to veg the plant two weeks minimum. You've got to take clones, right, and wait till they root two weeks. I mean, it's a long drawn out process to start from to start from unsex seeds see what i'm saying right well i, I had just had some that i've had for a while and i, I was just, just doing it just to piddle around basically uh and, and we're going to see what they turned out to be you know what i was doing 
Okay. All right. I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. But I do want to get back to this picture. And I have, I do have a couple other things to go through. I have some comments and stuff for the videos and stuff like that. And I've already only got 50 minutes left before the store is supposed to open. Time goes by quick. It's the same shit, but there's always a slightly different spin on it. That's why I have to do this week after week because, yes, you start to hear me say the same stuff, but once you hear the same stuff over and over, then the new stuff starts to appear, just like when you read my book, right? There are so many things in this book, you can't pull them all, you can't pick them up all in the same time, all at one time. Okay, so I just want to point out with this plant in flower, um, this plant's starting flower came out of veg. Uh, you look at the side here, it's got a little, some sort of silly mushroom bag in the back, but that's okay. It's either, it looks like it's, uh, you know, blowing in or sucking out or something. And, uh, and this was the top shot of the plant, of the garden. So we know the guy's growing in a 4x4. Four four. And when you look at this picture, we automatically notice there's no light in the picture. Why? Because the light's too far away. Well, it's too far away for the picture, but when you look at those plants, they look fantastic. Now, there's this picture and this one. Okay. I don't know what light it is. For instance, it could be a 600. But I will tell you that this is almost what your plant should look like, plant should look like with like a 400 watt six week veg. Now, there are a couple of, in this particular case, I don't have, I'm not looking to solve any problems. What I'm looking to do is help this guy do a better job because the leaves aren't burnt. You can see he's been topping them early on and often, and he's got that web. When you, he's got the full canopy of plants. When you look right here, you can see he's got just about a top in every hole. Now, I say just about a top in every hole, and that's a, yeah, Steven, it might sex, but, but can you get it back? And that was the other half of his question. Well, it's sex, yeah, maybe, but who knows? It puts the lotion on its skin. That's always awesome. Ariel, yes. Nine five one, you're on at the grow boss. Ah, looks like I try again. Nine five one. Okay, so the guy's lights. So this is let's say a forty nine minute call. This guy's gonna come up with two pictures for me. So the first thing, you know, I'm one hour forty nine dollar tech support call. Like, like. Uh, sick like uh like on my website so this is somebody that like signs up for a call it's a customer that comes in and shows me a picture of their garden it is it is it's two it's probably two or three plants shy of where you should be see here's the here's the problem with this he has, this is, this is what I, and this is, remember, this is all finesse. I'm not teaching someone how not to kill their shit with too many nutrients. I just want to suggest that when we look at, when we look at the bulk of his canopy, there are some obvious spots there are some obvious spots that are missing, right? Like, like, and they're big spots too, right? There, there are several, you know, I mean, there's tops and sort of along that edge and right here and over here. So all this wasted area, oh, you know what I mean? Like all this wasted area, suddenly what I see is you could take this row of plants here this row of plants and this row of plants and i would shift them both in this direction and i would shift them in this direction and i would open up 
this area in the middle. I would open up this area right here and I would put three more plants. And there's two components to this because I'm talking about he's got six plants and I can see the floor at the start of flower. And I suggest that, but I mean, I say that and I'm going to show you the other picture in one sec, but if these two were to be pulled out, these two rows of three plants were to be pulled out, you could for sure put two more in the middle or three more. Now, if he were to take all of these plants and veg them for two more weeks, then I believe he would have, see the problem is this canopy here, this canopy here should be all the, well, I guess it should actually be about this big. I mean, it should actually be damn close to double. And because it's not double the canopy, if I can get three more plants in there, it's, it's just, it's not tall enough for this it, to produce the weight. You're starting flower with just like, like just this right here is, is six inches. You see what I'm saying? Like this right here is like, is like six inches. And it really isn't tall enough to get the weight. So I'm suggesting, and maybe not even, maybe not even, um, maybe not even twice. Let's just say this is 10 inch. Listen, that's 75% more. You're starting veg with 75% more canopy. And that's a big deal. And that would also make this almost a foot tall. Now, if he's got a T5, 10 inches is just right because there isn't as much penetration. And if he's got an HID 600 watt, well, I'll tell you, he's gonna want, he's gonna want that light right there too. So this is why I had, <laughs> when I had started the show and I told you about that guy who came in and bought those three light rotations from me, all I'm suggesting is that here's a guy who's doing a good job and he's still missing. Not only is he missing, I mean, let, let, I mean, just to do the math, he's got, he's got, he needs to increase. Okay, so let's, uh, he needs to increase canopy height. And he needs to increase plant count or canopy volume. I make sure I correct my spelling because, you know, the videos live on for a while and I don't need that nonsense like haunting me forever that I spell stuff wrong. Because I still want to go over, I still want to go over comments. Get my desk back. Oh, I touched it with my right hand. I've been trying to avoid it. Okay, listen, this is what I'm trying to say. If you're going to increase canopy height by 75%, and you're going to increase canopy volume by literally 50%, 50%. I mean, you know, that's, that means that what's in there now is, is like, you'll ha it's like a fourfold. You need literally four times the canopy volume. I don't care whether you do that with more plants or you veg these ones longer, but if you need to increase the height 75%, that means you need 75% more canopy, even if you added the plants in the middle. So not only do you need a 50% increase in plant count, that's 33% more, all of it needs to be 75% bigger. You need more than, more than twice. Like you need four times the amount of canopy for sure. That's just the math of this. And we don't even need to know 
if that's a 400 or 600, whether that's veg or flour, we don't need to know any of those things. 951, you're on at the Grow Boss. How you doing, Grow Boss? Good morning. What can I do Just for you? Just calling it a... Man, I want to thank you for your book. Just want to let you know that's one of uh, It's an amazing book that everybody should own. Why? What did you get from it? Well, well, I got everything from it. Not only did I learn that you got to fill up more canopy, every run that I did after that book just gotten better and better and better. I went from, from yielding, you know, what I was used to, to increasing by almost 30, 40%. I mean, it was tenfold, I could see the difference. Oh yeah, it's like beyond obvious, right. Right, right. So I wanted to call and thank you for that. And okay. I just Let expanded me... I, to Sorry, another uh, tent. And oh. I'm doing a uh, 1,000 in a uh, four by four. And I got a uh, five by nine with two 1,000s in it. So my question would be, in order to maintain heat, to keep my heat down, can I run an eight inch fan for both those fans? I mean, for both those tents to vent them? Cause I'm on a six inch right now. Okay, first off, I'm going to direct you to page. Okay, give me a sec. I'm gonna direct you to page 49. And I would like to point out Okay. On this on this well circled page. All right, this is it's confusing with me with you on the phone. All right, thanks for the call. What I want to point out is uh, six hundred watt light, four by four space. You said you had five by nine, which is actually a, a five by ten tent. So you have a five by ten tent with two one thousands in it. When we come back to my book, it says 1,000 watt light, four by six. Four by six is five by five, same thing. So you have a thousand watt in a five by five space. Then you went to a four by four space. I will tell you as a rule, in terms of using the equipment and buying the right equipment, fans don't cool anything. Fans don't cool anything because air conditioners cool stuff. Fans only remove heat. And if you're not pulling in cold friggin' air, you're not, you're not cooling anything. So unless the air is the temperature that you want inside the room to be or colder, pulling outside air in does nothing. You'd be far better served to decrease the thousand to a 600 in the four by four and seal the room, add CO2, get an air conditioner in that room. Oh shit. Hey, hey, um, uh, um, your sick Chevy plants from earlier. I forgot. I was going to talk to you about that. Twelve weeks. Your plants are done. You don't. You can't veg for twelve weeks. Um, you know. And I just. I just remember that I was told you I was going to show you that. But I just want you to understand that when you look at these plants, these plants are probably five to six weeks old. Started from clone, not seed. Five to six weeks old. Started from clone. I mean, I, I just want to point out that. Okay, so I want to open, let's see, I want to open. Um, I just want to point out that these plants. Oh, man. That, that. that these plants are also end of four weeks old. So this is what your plant should look like. Now, what's happened here when you look at this picture is that, just to give you a little bit of math, what's happened at this picture is there's five plants under 300 watt light. That means each plant can grow, each plant can grow 60 watts of healthy plant. But when you look at this picture, it's obvious you can trim some off the bottom of these plants. Like you can trim you can trim this let's let's you can trim this much off the bottom and you can top this much and if this is 25 watts worth of plant and you take 10 watts like you trim 10 watts worth of plant from like the top and the middle on the inside um that would mean if you can grow 60 watts worth of plant you would be left with 60 watts of healthy plant 
That means this plant is 95 watts big. So was this plant overgrown? Yes. However, I want you to notice in all pictures that good growers don't trim their plants frequently. They're not they're fucking around with them all the time. Good growers don't care. They treat them like shit. Watch the Bushmaster. He literally trims once from a red cup, trims and tops once from a red cup into a one gallon. Once four weeks later from a one to a three. Once four weeks later from a three to the flower pot. That's it, man. There's no, they water him. Leave him the fuck alone. You don't get involved with your plants. So you look at this plant and you go, that thing looks, you know, yeah, sure, it's bright green, but look how messy it is. Messy? That's because nobody does anything. They leave it the fuck alone. There's nothing to be done. You water it, you come back, and in a couple of weeks, you're like, oh my God, look how much bigger it is. Weeks though, weeks and weeks and weeks. This is five weeks from clone. All I'm suggesting is that this is a 95 plant. And if you pluck 10 watts from the top and the inside, and you shape this plant up, and then you veg it, for one more week, you're going to get these plants because you're going to pull the tops down into a trellis. The plant's going to, well, actually probably wouldn't even put a trellis from that last picture. What you would just end up doing is uh, you, would, you, would, you would top it, pull the bottom off, strip the bottom, lollipop it, top it, super crop it, and then you would let it veg under that light for one more week. Why? Because if it's got 95 watts worth of plant on it right now, 95 watts worth of plant and you reduce it down to let's say like 60 watts or 50 watts worth of plant you can leave it under there for a few more days what you wouldn't do is you wouldn't transition a smaller plant into flower give it more light give it more nutrients put it in a bigger bucket i mean what are we talking about it's a smaller fucking plant by a third it's a real thing that's why when you see something like what this guy sets up, where he takes the extra week and he stretches it out and he really has his plants and the leaves aren't bucking, they're not too far down. I mean, okay, the, the top ones even are bright and big and face up, but you could see, you could fit three more plants, two more plants for sure in there. If you pushed them to the outside, oh yeah. I mean, that is so close. Now, he can fit if even if he vegged for one more week even if he vegged for one more week and isn't flowering hasn't started flowering you would still never fill in these empty spaces right here you would still never fill them in and when the 12 week guy sick chevy <laughs> plants <laughs> that's funny you got me good on that one when 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 you think about this all, I'm not suggesting that he changes nutrients. I'm not suggesting that he changes light. I'm not suggesting that he changes his water schedule. Blam! So you already know there's no problems because the only other thing I could say is, ooh, add a little more mag or spray for bugs. Why? Because there's only five problems. Too much light, too much water, too many nutrients, spray for bugs, add cow mag. Why? Because cow mag is the number one problem in a healthy garden. But this guy's killing it. I mean, my only comment is he should be more killing it with 50% more plants and to fill up that canopy a little bigger before he goes into flower. Because think about it like a four-year college program. Somebody drops out in semester one. Yo, there's three and a half years of an empty seat. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of business the school loses because they're still paying the teachers. They're still paying the buildings. They're still paying the air conditioning. This guy's still paying the light. This guy's still paying the air conditioning. This guy's still paying the bills. So if you could get three more plants in there for not having to change the light, okay, so it's a little more soil and a little more nutrients. But if, if soil or nutrients were so expensive, it wouldn't even be worth doing this. What I'm suggesting is, is that this is fan-freaking-tastic. It's really close. Like all you really needed to do was fill up those empty squares. Now, I know you don't think there are that many empty squares, but there really are. Because when we switch from that picture to this picture, blam, suddenly there are a lot of empty squares. I mean, you don't really need a top in every square, but you do need a top in like 85% of the squares. When you start flowering. Okay. 
Um, I had, let's see. I always like going through the comments on the videos. Okay, this one starts off interesting. Oh, um, I actually had something that it's going to, I actually have a spam one up. Okay. Um, okay, so somebody wanted me to explain that guy. Okay, I'll show you the picture of what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, okay. This is that guy. See that guy? That's, that's me. That's you. That's every one of my customers, okay? That guy always wants to water more. That guy always wants to feed more. But, I don't even know. But in some of the pictures, I always show, I show them with, a flame in his ass. Now that guy represents all of my customers. And and I show him with a flame in his ass because the more you do, the less you get. For instance, see my see what I think about nutrients? Fuck nutrients. See that? Nutrients cause more problems than they're worth. I mean, what do I know? I'm just a guy behind the counter. But, uh, okay, so he's gotta be, I know he's around somewhere. But my observation is always just, you guys always do too much. And when you do too much, you're, uh, your bud smells like ass and burns like a road flare. And early on in the book, before cannabis really started to get legalized, the, man, the vendors, my advertisers, didn't like that I said burns like a road flare because it intimated smoking. But now, they don't care. I've got a marijuana version of the book. They don't care. So now it goes back to when we talk about cannabis, when you use too many nutrients, now I tell you, you can't tell what light it was grown with, what nutrients it was grown with, what system it was grown in, indoors, out, nothing. You can't tell nothing about it. So who cares, right? So who cares about all that? Um, all I'm suggesting is don't kill your shit for 12 weeks and then harvest because, you know, that guy I called earlier was vegging for 12 weeks. That's not right. And so fart man with a flare in his ass is every one of my customers. Just this sort of indescript, you know, neutral kind of a guy that just, uh, just represents all my customers. I mean, I'm literally, I mean, that says me right there. I'm literally that guy too. I'm just saying when you add a lot of nutrients to it, it doesn't look as good. Okay. Let's see. I think this guy posted a video. I was supposed to look at, oh, this is, did I get spam? Um, I guess I got, oh, I thought it was something else. All right, delete that, prove that. Okay, back to real comments. Okay, let's find something challenging. I don't know this one. I couldn't find the answer anywhere, and people in grow shops don't know either. Does anyone know what portion of bio-nutrients gets absorbed by roots directly via osmotic pressure, and what portion is left for the microbial life to transform into ions available for the roots? I don't know what bio-nutrients are. I mean, it's, is it organic? Bio doesn't, I mean, bio is, bio is a preface, a preface, like biology? No, no, bio nutrients. Okay, it would make sense that there should be a warning on soil that does not contain any beneficial bacteria or microbes to use with inorganic 
nutrients only. For example, what will happen if I use playground terra soil, no bacteria microbes, with bio nutrients? Yes, I know the answer to that. Does anyone know this? It will be so much appreciated. I think it's very good information. I will tell you the definition of an organic nutrient, okay? An organic, N organic, organic nutrients, there we go. Organic nutrients must be broken down by a biological life force before they become available to the plant. So plants cannot uptake inorganic nutrients. Now, how you create the nutrients, how you create the nutrients, whether that be synthetic or with microbes, think about it like, uh, think about it like, If you take, if you take uh, guano, some of it is available now. Some of it is waiting to be processed by the microbes. Some of it is currently being processed. So there's a section of stuff that's currently being processed, already available, and waiting to be processed. So when you, if you add a guano, what's made available is this section here. What's made available shortly after this is this section here. Then later, this section here will begin to break down. What I'm suggesting is, is if you take this same curve and you make it all available end to end, like with a T, um, in, in terms of the scope, the, you, you should only be using this much uh, uh, guano. Because if you make this much available, this much would technically is the same as this. Otherwise, you make shit too hot. That's why I'm telling you guys, as soon as you try to make any kind of a soil, if you make it hot enough for four weeks of healthy veg, it's almost too hot for week one. Because if you make four, if you make a, a, a mix hot enough for week five flour, how are you going to use it for week one? It's five times the strength by definition, and it's probably all available. So what you would do is you would either make a tea with a smaller amount, or you would top dress it. So you could make a hot mix. Great. Take one scoop out, throw it on top of the bucket, and now suddenly you have a... Uh, you have a top dress and you water through it and it acts like a little microbial powder and it's brilliant. Oh yeah. So unavailable, think about making glucose. It's no different than photosynthesis. The process at the roots is no different than photosynthesis. If you run a sealed garden with no CO2, you will not produce glucose. The plants cannot produce glucose because they take the C from the CO2 and they make sugar with it, and they take the O2, and they both combine it, and they, and, they, and they release it as a gas, and they take the O from the H2O, and they release, they use the H for sugar, and then they sweat water to get rid of the heat. That's why, in the middle of summer here in Vegas, my plants, the plants outside my store, can survive in 117 degrees. That's why you guys call me up and you tell me your shit's 85 degrees. What, what do I care? It's 117 degrees outside. Want to know what the trick is? The trick is the sun is 96 million miles away. So if your room is 86 degrees, but your light's 24 inches away from the plant, why is the car 140 degrees inside? Why is the glass 150 degrees? Why is your seat so hot? Why is the steering wheel so hot? Why is your dash so hot? Because all light is heat. I don't care what light you use. It all comes down to the same thing. Light is heat. That's why I don't care what light you buy. Don't care if you buy a CMH or DE or an LED or CFLs if you don't really want to finish. I don't care if you do this in hydro. Don't care what nutrients you buy. Don't care about any of the products. I can use all of them. I got palm trees sitting outside 117 degrees. They don't care. Why? Because they take the they take the O from the H2O and they take the water and they release it as sweat. So even though it's 117 degrees outside, they're not 117 degrees. 
because they use water. However, they drink twice the water because they're using it as a sweating agent. So what do I always tell you? In fact, I have a video I should probably start posting. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I literally have a video called a book and equipment guide. And here are the top three things you need to know about growing weed Check this out. during the hot summer months brought to you by Humboldt Nutrients. Number three, if you're running a hood like this, make sure to remove the glass, buy yourself an insulator, vent your hood, and remember, you can always dim the ballast and time it such that you're not flowering with the brightest light during the hottest months. Number two, you can raise the light so it's further away from the canopy because all light is heat. Or if you've got a Nickel City T5 adjustable like this, let's say you have a 16 bulb, you can turn four bulbs off run it like a 12 volt or if you have a 12 volt you can run it like an 8 volt and that will save you a lot of heat but before i tell you the number one thing you need to know about growing during the hot summer months you should know this i buy more used equipment at my store during the summer than the entire rest of the year okay so here's the number one thing you need to know about growing during the hot summer months brought to you by humble nutrients Wow. All right, here's the yeah. thing. If you're going to drink twice the water during the hot summer months, then so are your plants. And if you give your plants twice the water and you don't cut your nutrients in half, then you're going to be giving your plants twice the nutrients. And what are the top three problems I always say kills your plants? Too much light, too much water, and too many nutrients. So trust me, if your plant takes twice the water, cut your nutrients in half. I'm the Grow Boss. If you want more information about growing weed, you can pick up a copy of my Grow Book at your local hydroponics store, eBay, Amazon, or my website, thegrowboss.com. Oh, yeah. Listen, that shit's just as true right now as it was when I made that video last year. It's the same shit. And it's the same shit year after year, right? Seasonal. Like two months ago, I bought a couple of cases of uh, spider mite spray. But six months before that, I bought a couple of cases of mold and mildew spray. Why? Because tis the season. Because it's the same shit over and over and year after year. And even when you watch the Bushmaster series, he learned, le he learned seasonal lessons. Woo! Shit got blowed up. All I'm suggesting is that once you don't kill your plants, I think for a lot of you, it turns into something like this. Oh, I was going through the comments. I think it turns into something like this, where, uh, where you start to get much better results. And you hear it when the, when the callers, you know, they call in and they say stuff. Um, great. Oh, here, I love these ones. Great White is a ripoff, and this guy is a moron. No such thing as newt lockup. The entire field of horticulture disagrees with you. You need zero newts if you grow super soil. Make your own castings. I'm on, I've on the seventh grow with the same dirt, no newts. This guy is a snake oil salesman who couldn't grow if he wanted to. If he could, he wouldn't be making never ending shitty videos with bad information. Oh, I love that. Listen, the first fact is, he knows who I am, and I have no idea who he is, and I'm not particularly interested. And again, I will tell you every day of the week, I hate growing. Oh my God, it is slow, it's painful, my face explodes the first eight and the last eight days of flower from the, pollen, from the, from the phenols and the, I, oh, dude. I'm not, a, I'm not a patient guy. I'm not a good grower. I mean, I, I don't like growing. I grow good, but... It's just, I own a store, man. One, I can't grow and own a store because then you're hot, right? You work at a store, you look at it like this, you're hot. You can't, you can't be involved in it like that. Okay. Two, great white is a ripoff? All right. So we go from great white is a ripoff to this guy is a moron. Listen, the end of the sentence doesn't, 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 is non sequitur to the first. No such thing as newt lockup. 
I didn't say there was no such thing as nutrient lockout because there is. You could be in a situation where your soil is so low or so high that there's problems. For instance, we look at halophiles, things that like to live in high salt water. They tend to have like those mango grove trees. They tend to have their roots above the ground with an enormous amount of filtration for salt. What I'm suggesting is that there is so much shit in all of the nutrients that if you use half of what they say, you'll never have a micronutrient problem. You'll never, it'll never happen. Now, I do, however, say that, you know, it's very easy to get nutrient lockout, but it's not from the pH because all the soil I sell and all the water in my store, I mean, all the RO systems, the ultimate RO and all the nutrients, listen, they all set the pH. They all set the pH somewhere between five and seven. And frankly, I got palm trees outside, tap water, 500 PPM, 117 degrees today. Don't give a fuck. What I'm suggesting is, it's not the value you think it is, CWD243. You say there's nutrient lockout. I say you overwater, rot the roots, and the nutrients can't pick it up. You say nutrient lockout. Yeah, that's like saying it's a sneeze. But see, I'm a paramedic nurse. I'm a network engineer, econ degree. I have, it's my job to find the true nature of the problem and treat that. What you've described is a symptom. It's a cough. It's a sneeze. You said nutrient lockout. I say there is no system inside in a grower who's going to shop in my store. There's no system that's going to be below five or below seven. People are so fixated on pH that you would literally have to abandon the project, let it dry up and die before the pH would ever become a problem. And then the pH has to be so low that the plant has to run out of the shit for five or six weeks, right? Because it's a plant, man. Nothing's going to happen tomorrow. So as soon as anybody tells me it's instantaneous or it's super intense, I already know you don't get the idea of what this growing is about. And I would just like to say, he's on the seventh grow at the same dirt. So my question is, is he keep recharging it? Okay. And you say that the entire field of, no, no, zero newts. I grow, if you grow super soil, make your own castings. Dude, when you say make your own castings, what I'm going to assume is, I mean, because I'm the moron, but your sentence says that you make your own castings. Now, I know what worm castings are, but I really want to, wouldn't want to smoke bud made from your castings, which is actually what the sentence says. And you know why I comment about being so accurate in my videos with my spelling and my English? It's because make your own castings. It's almost... It's almost a dangling modifier. You make your own castings, but you don't mention the worm parts. Are you making night soil with human castings? You're out there doing something like that? I'm gonna assume not. But I've on the seventh grow with the same dirt, no newts. How could, I, I think the whole science world agrees that nutrients are necessary, right? Because the leaves, the plants suck the nitrogen out of the knees before the, the leaves before they abscess and they fall off, right? Not evergreens, but like annuals, right? The leaves fall off. But the leaves are made of PK that fall into the ground and get washed by the rains back into the root. And then nitrogen comes in with all the animal feces and the everywhere. So I don't know about the, the never use newts. Snake oil sales, it wouldn't be making never ending shitty videos with bad information. I just love that. I love when you know who I am. I have no idea who you are. I mean, that's the ultimate compliment is for you not to like me and then try to argue with me. Because, um, here, you are welcome to call in live. Oh, I got this. To call my show in live and tell us all about it. Weekends at 9 a.m. And tell us all about it. There you go. Come on in. Tell me all about it. You're very brave. But I'd like to hear the justification because I'd also like to make sure that you're using worm castings. But I'd like to hear the justification on the position because I can't imagine that you're in a position 
that you're the guy to cite the entire field of horticulture because I'm going to look at you and I'm going to, what, I'm going to tell you the same thing. The entire field of successful growers is going to tell you that nutrient lockout doesn't exist and that most growers fail. I mean, listen, I sit here and cite my own book. Oh, did you know what this guy says? I cite myself all the time. It is a little creepy. Grobos says, don't use too many nutrients. Grobos says, don't put your IG pros. Yeah, Grobos says, leave your shit alone for 12 weeks and then harvest. So, listen, it's all the same shit. It's always the same questions. Growers come in, it's always the same questions. What, what are the hydro stores are about? What's their job? Their job is to sell your shit. You better know what you're doing before you go in there. You can buy yourself a car you can't afford. Okay. Oh, yeah. Grow boss. I overwatered a plant big time. So I transplanted into a small pot with dry soil to let it dry out. How many times should I let the leaves droop a bit before watering again? Before I start trying to feed it again? Because it's growing so slow. Purple stems, small growth, and yellowing from the bottom up. Really need your help. I've been dealing with this shit for months now. After trying to switch to organic soil coming from cocoa. Quick blunt answer would be greatly appreciated, sir. Thank you. Oh, P.S. The temps are a little bit low, like 70 degree. Could, be, could that be the problem or doesn't matter too much? And the soil said it had three months worth of feed in it, so I figured don't feed it yet since it's new soil. Scott's Pure Organic Potting Planting Mix. Okay, so what do I tell you about soil? It's all the same shit as long as you buy the soil that we sell in a hydro store. Why? Because hydro store soil has specifically been pasteurized and sterilized and treated to be bug and mold free. So when you get it, you don't have any problems. Outdoor soil is not the same thing. Outdoor soil, well, frankly, you throw potting soil outdoors, you water it, and the bugs fly away. Who the fuck cares? It's when you use that shit indoors and you're sitting around dinner and you're like, where the fuck are the bugs coming from? I'll tell you where the bugs are coming from. Bugs are coming from the $6 soil you just bought. Now you're going to have to buy a $20, $25, $30 bottle of some shit to get rid of it, even if you're not overwatering. Why? Because cheap soil has bugs. $6 soil, $20 soil. My $20 soil costs me... I'm supposed to sell it for, I think, like 22 bucks, 24 bucks, something like that. I think it cost me 11 bucks. So I'm just saying it costs me 11. I buy it by the pallet. What are they selling for six? It just seems like one of those things that people are going to build the perfect environment. They're going to save 14 bucks on soil on a 12 week investment. And they're going to have a super soil. I'm just also suggesting that if you have 12 months, I mean, 12 weeks worth of nutrients in the soil, you have to use it as a top dress because it's too hot for anything regular. All right, let's keep going through the comments because there's still more information in there. All right. So I overwatered big time. So I did more. What more thing could I think to do, Grow Boss? Oh, well, I transplanted into a small plot. Small pot. So you went backward. Your plant's dead. You've already overwatered big time. So now to dry out your plant, instead of just leaving it the fuck alone in a big pot for four weeks, whatever, you've decided to go to a smaller plant. Why? Because you want to let it dry out. And then you ask, how many times should I let the leaves droop a bit before watering again, before I start trying to feed it again? Listen, plants are already, you've already killed the plant. In terms of the sale and scope of this project, unless you have to save your plant because you want that strain, always start over. Unless you're a seed. Like seed, but if you can go get another clone, never rescue a sick Chevy plant. Why? Because it's, listen, it takes four weeks for a plant to get better. Why would you waste four weeks on a sick plant when you could just start a new plant and four weeks from now, it'll look like, it'll look like these plants. Why would you, why would you fight that battle? Now, I'll, you know, it looks like this is the end of four weeks. Now, I know why some growers fight that battle because they want to beat Captain Save a plant. Great. 
Captain, save a plant yourself all day long. But you have to remember, when I talk about this stuff, I don't talk about this stuff in terms of favorite strain. Don't care. I don't talk about this stuff in terms of statistics or THC or anything like that. I talk about this stuff in term of, terms of corn or any other agricultural crop. Why? Because it is. It's just any other agricultural crop. And except in this case, there seems to be this huge potential for money. So who do we get that goes after huge potentials of money? People that think they're going to get something for nothing? Gangsters. Hell yeah. They're going to get something from nothing. Just I'm just saying, not the typical kind of person, 18 to 49 year old, dumb, stupid, aggressive male, that's particularly going to be patient. And that's what growing cannabis is really about. These plants are five weeks old. There is nothing you could have done to have sped up the process to get them here. You can't double your nutrients. Oh, my favorite thing. My favorite thing ever you can't do. Oh, my favorite thing ever. Oh, I just love this thing. They occasionally call my store trying to get me to buy stuff. Trying to buy this product. Ah, oh, I uh, love the BioWave DL9000. Okay, so, I mean, just, I mean, you guys know my opinion. If you don't know how to grow, it doesn't matter. But you got to love that picture where they have it outside. I, I mean, it really, listen, sing into a baby in a belly. It, it does stuff. And maybe the BioWave does stuff. But it is funny. I mean, it is funny to think about this thing out here spinning around. Nam yaho, renge kyo. And making like harmonic convergence. I mean, it's funny. I'm sure the BioWave works. I'm sure it works exactly as it claims. I don't even, uh, I don't even, uh, I don't even dispute their claim. Whatever their claim is, I'm sure it's worth the $4,000. Oh, just love this one. I think this is like the, uh, oh, the BioWave Mini, 1100 bucks. Oh, it's like playing the ocean when you're trying to go to bed. It's like white noise. Love the BioWave Mini. It does whatever it is it claims it does. If it didn't, why would it claim it does? <laughs> Emitters generate subsonic harmonic waves that reverberate with frequencies of plant and makes the... Emitters generate subsonic harmonic waves that reverberate with frequencies of plant. Okay, I did read it right. And makes the leaves pores to widen oh it's just sorry just not english as a first language okay got it so the emitters generate subsonic harmonic waves that reverberate with the frequencies of the plant making the leaves pores widen and stay open helping in nutrient absorption this helps increase the average yield by 20 percent increased reps respiration transpiration results in greater yields on the whole, BioWave Mini Subsonic Harmonic Emitter is a modern sonic development induction system using an exclusive frequency methodology. <laughs> I just love Star Trek. That is technically manifested in lab environment. In a lab environment, the building block of this subsonic harmonic emitter is two stainless steel cages that rotate in the opposite direction. Oh my God! I know what this is. I know what this is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I got this. <laughs> oh yeah. I got this uh, movie contact. Um, yeah, movie contact. Okay, let me, let me, I know what this is. We all know what this is. Oh, I love this one. This is, uh, okay. Okay, is this, okay, let's just find the one. I'm clear to go. I'm clear to go. Houston, if you can read me, I'm clear to go. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't Houston. But, uh, okay, so, okay, so she's sitting, okay, so I'm clear, I'm clear to go. Oh, I just love this. Okay, right, she's got these two spinning wheels, check that out. Ah, ah, just love the bio wave. There's the bio wave. There's the bio wave. Boom. Look, she falls right through the bio wave. 
One more outside shot. Are they going to give us one more outside shot? No. Okay. So, anyway. So she falls through this. Oh, I just love that thing. There it is. There it is. Right there. So these two spinning discs. So, I mean, clearly the BioWave works. And you should buy it. Because I think it works on the same principle of transporting... Jodie Foster in contact through time. <laughs> the building block of this subsonic harmonic emitter is two stainless steel cages that rotate in opposite directions, producing subsonic harmonic waves that make the plant breathe better. Because it's made of stainless steel, this emitter is highly durable and corrosion resistant. It does not have any harmful impact on humans. It only influences plants. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's a plant whisperer. All the materials and equipment used in the subsonic harmonic emitter is weatherproof. weatherproof. Also, since it works, you have to plug it in. It's a plug and play. It's very easy to operate. It's new subsonic emitter is sturdy, efficient, powerful, and also, okay, so there's some bullet points. God, it can only get better. <laughs> that creates a wormhole. That releases supernatural for oh those ghostbusters right the top of the building oh my god i love this ghostbusters ghostbusters oh, i think i spelled it wrong yeah ghostbusters oh when that thing came out of the oh man when it came oh, this is brilliant when they came out of the top of that building in new york city anyway it helps plants respiration, increases the percentage of solids presence in the juice, oh, that's bricks level, of a plant, and enhances the quality of yield. It's perfect for discrete rooms and tiny plots. Helps repel and prevent harmful insects. Um, so just be clear, it does not have any harmful impact on, on, impact on humans. It only influences plants and apparently pests down here. And harmful insects, repel and prevent harm. So I'm assuming it's like uh, the thing you plug into your wall that gets rid of rats in your house. Okay. This subsonic emitter made of state of seal it will not impact light or any other electrical apparatus. It won't works on the basis of plug and play around 500 square feet. You only need a damp cloth and hand soap for cleaning. It's durable and corrosion resistant. Oh, dude. I don't even know what to say about it. I don't even know what to say about it. I don't even know what to say about it. So I'm just going to say it is whatever they say it is. If it wasn't, why would they say it was? That's familiar. I've heard that somewhere before. Oh, I just love that so much. All right. It's getting on 11 o'clock. I'm going to have to open the store in a minute. We can pick this up again in, uh, next week. Again, if you want to know more about what I do, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, all about nutrients, marijuana garden rescue, gardens and grooms, I mean, hydroponics, 420 guide. Yes. No, I'll tell you, I don't do cocoa bricks, and I'll tell you why. The whole point about cocoa is how spongy it is. And once you compact it into one of those bricks, it just sort of loses the whole value for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all. A bag of cocoa is 25 bucks. A bag of cocoa is 25 bucks. No, I don't carry the bricks. Um, no. You have to call around and ask. Yes, sir. Okay, so Garden Science, if you buy the kit, you get a poster issue from me. You get the No More, Grow More cards. I mean, these are all the questions and answers, all the questions you guys ask. Of course, you get all these fun stuff that I also include, like the troubleshooting charts and the Grow Diamond and vendor advertising and tips and tricks from vendors that I've helped them coordinate to give you good information. All right. Let's see where am I at the end of the show? I am at the end of the show. 
Uh, uh, fade to black. Yeah. How do you? All right. So uh, I guess uh, everybody, uh, blah, go away. <laughs> we can pick this up. Oh, I was supposed to get in the Project Grow House. We can pick this up again next week. I'm gonna have to open up my store, and uh, I want a bio wave. I love that. I just love that. Love the shit they sell to growers. Why? Because we sell hopes and dreams at the hydro store. I mean, with an 85% failure rate, what it is? What is it you think we sell here? I mean, we don't sell success and big wins. So we must be selling hopes and dreams because everybody does too much. Ah, dream catchers. Anyway, I'm the grow boss. It's super easy to grow cannabis. Leave them the fuck alone for 12 weeks and then harvest your butt. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me by, uh, by paying. <laughs> That's funny. I say it like that, but you can always reach out to me by paying $49 an hour. And I'll literally sit on the phone with you. You can send me pictures. We go through your garden specifically. What you need. Everything you need to know to grow. And uh, thanks for watching another episode of the uh, Canvas Hotline with the Grow Boss. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.